Ms. Hutchinson, I also want to thank you about bringing up the poverty draft and this idea of a bootstrap. You know, this idea and this metaphor of a bootstrap started off as a joke because it's a physical impossibility to lift yourself up by a bootstrap by your shoelaces, it's physically impossible. The whole thing is a joke. I'm now a contributor to several reputable online resources and will publish my memoir in May. I'm living a life far beyond what my high school education and upbringing would have suggested, and I wouldn't have been able to accomplish any of these things had my mentality and beliefs about self been any different. I'm a U.S. Army veteran and a proud black conservative. I grew up in the working class community of Akron, Ohio, and was raised by a single mother who was yes on government assistance for a, sh a small point in time when I was very young after my mother and father divorced. Although we didn't have much money or access to a whole lot of resources, she worked very hard to provide for her children. Like many who grew up in Akron, Ohio, I attended some of the lowest performing and underfunded schools in the neighborhood. Disaffected teachers would routinely come to class unprepared, and my counselors had little idea of what to do a student with a student who quite obviously didn't have an athletic scholarship ready and available for him upon graduation. What we did have in our poor working class neighborhood, however, was a strong sense of community and an undying belief in self. <clears throat> The figureheads, parents, and activists of my day always spoke positively of a brighter future, one where they'd have successfully passed on the torch of leadership and hope of opportunity to us so that we could pave the way for additional successes, just like our forefathers and mothers had done for us. That undying belief in the ability for us as human be beings, each of us all endowed with great gifts, to continuously improve and better our circumstances in the world around us is what drove me to better myself and to serve my country. I graduated from high school near the top of my class and decided to serve my country as an infantryman in the United States Army, including a deployment to both Kuwait and Iraq. I credit the time that I spent in the Army with building the unshakable belief that I have in myself that I am not a victim that there is nothing that I cannot achieve and that I am in the best place I could possibly be in to do this, which is the United States of America. I joined the military because I love my country and because it offered a working class kid like me the opportunity to see the world far beyond the confines of Akron, Ohio. It offered me the American dream. Today, I'm a political analyst who has provided commentary on several major news networks, including CNN and Fox News. I have met the last two presidents of the United States. I have met ambassadors, congressmen and women, and senators. I advocate for veterans' rights. I protested for the repeal of the Don't Ask, Don't Tell law that barred service for military members who were openly lesbian, gay, or bisexual. I am the first person in the history of my family to receive my uh, bachelor's degree from Syracuse University and also my master's degree from Columbia University. I'm now a contributor to several reputable online resources and will publish my memoir in May. I'm living a life far beyond what my high school education and upbringing would have suggested, and I wouldn't have been able to accomplish any of these things had my mentality and beliefs about self been any different. If I had succumbed to the soft bigotry of low expectations or to any of the rhetoric from elected officials who wish to substitute the role that strong individuals and communities play in supporting each other with that of an all-powerful, un all unaccountable, and bloated government, where would I be today? The proof is right in front of us for all to see. Even those who advocate for socialism Mr. continue Smith, to reap gonna... the benefits of the greatest economy this generation has seen. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Thank you.
Thank you